So let's go a little bit more in depth on Games Workshop's Christmas Battle Forces for Warhammer 40k, which ones are the most and least popular, and how many points do you get in each box? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd revisit the Christmas Battle Force boxes, and after the initial quick take that we did on Monday, I thought it would be interesting to actually try and compare them a bit, see which ones are most popular with people, and compare them by a few other metrics in terms of the amount of money in the box, plus how many points it gets you on the board. With that in mind, you can certainly arbitrarily compare things like points numbers and the amount that Games Workshop sells things for separately, but I feel perhaps the best value of which boxes people are actually likely to pick up is maybe just to do a bit of a poll and see which box sets people feel are overall the best, as to be honest, that's going to be the main thing for which ones people go for. I did that one as a channel poll over on the community post and asked people to tell me why they liked ones more than others, so I thought we'd go through all of them starting from the worst and getting towards the best, talk about points, prices, and some of the positives and negatives, and maybe a few more thoughts as to what sort of things they might pair well with, like the combat patrols. Of course, perhaps some of the most hotly anticipated information is how much they're going to cost. The last ones are around about the £130, $210, or €160 Euro mark. Games Workshop has released a bunch of boxes just a little bit cheaper than that, things like £120 and $200. I think there's a reasonable chance that it could be that. I guess we'll have to wait and see though. Either way, they are looking like fairly big ticket items. So going through the boxes one by one, the one that you guys voted as the worst was the Raven Guard Strike Force, contained within our Cave on Strike, two Invictor Warsuits, ten Reavers, three Eliminators, the Phobos Librarian, and the Raven Guard Upgrades and Transfers. It certainly shows that the amount of money within the box doesn't really mean all that much, as I believe that this one actually ranks best in terms of the amount of cash that Games Workshop would sell these for separately. But because of the content that are on offer, it doesn't stop it from being the worst box in people's eyes in terms of value. Points-wise, it's kind of middling, around about 810 points. Often the points cost for these estimates will vary a bit depending on what upgrades you give squads and things, but kind of middling on that regard. I must admit, when I saw it, I wasn't immediately enthused by it. Games Workshop just has a bit of a history now of putting lots of big discount bundles together with the Phobos Marines, the Spooky and Sneaky Primaris, which do fit in quite well with Raven Guard, to be fair. But for a lot of chapters, it just doesn't really feel like their primary aesthetic. Most of the stuff in this box is pretty easily discounted in other places, say the already existent Space Wolves Combat Patrol that has Reavers plus an Invictor in it, so they were already on offer cheaper if you really wanted. The Eliminators are good, but again, they're on offer cheaper in the Combat Patrol Space Marines, which already gives you a whole load of Phobos if you really wanted to go down that route already. Most of these units, at least in the current version of the Space Marine Codex, are just a bit suboptimal, really. Reavers have been pretty underwhelming for ages, Invictors are maybe a bit meh or outside Ultramarines, and the fact that these Space Marine box sets are kind of locked to one given chapter really does diminish their utility. There might be the most value in it in terms of money, but if you don't want the Raven Guard upgrades or Cave on Shrike, then that one's going to take a pretty massive chunk out of any expected savings. Overall, I'm really not too surprised that people voted this one last, but even so, I think it's really not the worst if you did say want to start a Raven Guard force and theme it around Phobos. I feel like it actually pairs really well with the current Space Marine Combat Patrol. You could have that for even more Phobos Marines, plus suppressors and another character, and that would get you really quite a lot of points of Space Marines on the board for fairly cheap. Raven Guard do have their following, but they aren't one of the super popular chapters to be honest. And until they get any sort of new supplement book, they're quite underwhelming in-game on their own terms as well. They basically won no big tournaments in most of 9th edition. Let me know what you think though, does this one deserve to be voted last, or do you think it deserves a bit better than that? Next up, and voted into 7th place, was the Adeptus Mechanicus Elimination Maniple. This one contains Call, 6 Catatron Servitors, 2 Castellan Robots and their attendant Datasmith, and then 10 Skitari. Bought separately, these kits would cost you $310, £184, or €243, Euros, and it gets you a few points less than the Raven Guard one at around about 720 That is right on the lower end of the point spectrum of things. Admech are a fairly expensive army to collect in general, I suppose, but this one gets you less points on the board than most of the other boxes, despite containing core. Again, I certainly wouldn't say it's terrible to have a bunch of Admech forces collected all together like this, I feel like maybe out of the box those Castellan robots are perhaps the pick of it. Quite nice to have the option to pick those up at a slight discount if you wanted to. But I do feel like a lot of the rest of the box just has some big overlap with the already available combat patrol. You get Skitari infantry and Catafron servitors in that, so having them in big numbers here just doesn't really add all that much. Cole's a fun model, though not particularly strong in game at the moment. 
and the Catastrons and the Castellan robots are certainly nothing to write home about either right now. I guess with the next chapter approved in January, I certainly expect some fairly hefty buffs to the Adeptus Mechanicus, who are currently struggling, so it might be that a lot of these units do get a lot better, but overall I can see why, as a discount bundle, these guys are kind of underwhelming looking. Not many points, and it seems to be the very lowest in terms of cost savings for the amount of models that you get in the box. In 6th place, and to be honest, very very close with the Adeptus Mechanicus, they were pretty much even when I counted the votes. Here we have the Imperial Fist Bastion Strike Force, led by Tor Garadon. This one is basically Space Marine Gravis Armour, the box set, Tor Garadon, 3 Aggressors, 15 Heavy Intercessors, and the Imperial Fist Upgrades and Transfers set. Cost-wise, again it is on the lower end of the spectrum, only just ahead of the Adeptus Mechanicus and not by much. And points-wise, it does seem to be one of the very lowest in terms of box set points around about 700 points, and slightly worse than the Abmech, depending on exactly what gear that you give them. Overall, I feel like this is a set that you look at and say, do you want heavy intercessors at a discount? If yes, then it's tempting. If no, then don't get it. I feel like being fairly focused on one unit type, and quite a recent one that hasn't been discounted before, is overall a positive for it. I have seen some people at least theorising that sometimes these Christmas box sets can be used to get rid of old stock or something. I honestly have no idea how much merit there is on those rumours. But I guess if heavy intercessors weren't selling particularly well, then this would be a good way to do so. Again, this one does have the negative of having a whole bunch of Imperial Fist specific stuff locked up in the box set, which does reduce its value a bit, particularly for the shoulder pads. At least with this one compared with the Raven Guard one though, you could just convert Tor Garadon into another character of some sort. You could just swap his weapons about a bit and have him fielded as a standard Space Marine Captain or maybe the Heavy Bolt Rifle one. Otherwise, for downsides, while it does seem to fit in with the Imperial Fist mass bolter aesthetic pretty nicely, in-game is not exactly going to be doing a whole load of work. Heavy Intercessors and Imperial Fist more generally just are fairly weak in terms of 40k power right now. Again, points and rules changes could always change that in the future though. Otherwise, having the lowest points cost on paper, plus fairly low cost separately, are both negatives as well, and perhaps contribute to why people weren't so excited for this one as they were for several of the others. If you did desperately want to jump into Space Marine Gravis armor in a big way though, this would certainly get you started. Pair it all with some eradicators for some heavy anti-tank damage, and you'd have a big battle line full of chonky boys. Moving on, in 5th place we have the Sisters of Battle Sanctorum Guard. This one was voted significantly higher than the Admech and Imperial Fists, but a fair bit lower than some of the rest. If the previous one was Heavy Intercessors, the box set, then this one is Paragon Warsuits. The box is led by Morven Bar, there's two sets of three Paragon Suits, one set of Sisters of Battle, and five Celestian Sacrosants. Costed separately, it's kind of similar to the Imperial Fists one, but you get a fair few more points in it overall, up at 930. Looks like a pretty good deal for getting a whole chunk of points of Sisters on the table, to be honest. Again, like Admech, they are one of the more expensive armies to collect, so getting a whole chunk of points all together in one go like this isn't the worst thing. Again, as their focus box mainly around the War Mechs doesn't really hurt at all. As Sisters miniatures go, they are at least fairly recent models, so a fair few people might not have picked them up yet. They haven't been discounted before in any way to my knowledge, and nor have the Sacrosants or Mrs. Val herself. Currently Sisters are fairly strong at the moment, and I'd say that literally every single one of these units is very usable in-game. The Paragon suits were pretty rubbish when they came out, but getting Armour of Contempt plus a points drop really seems to have turned them around. As with a few of these box sets, being built around a unique character is a little bit annoying. It means that if you already had more than Val, and quite a lot of Sisters players do, then it means that her presence in the box isn't going to be particularly helpful, and you'd either have to just eat the extra cost or resell the miniature or something. If you don't though, then she does seem to be a pretty excellent Supreme Commander for the Sisters at the moment, with the full rerolls to hit and wound. Being focused around the Paragon suits is good if you want them, though obviously bad if you don't. Not everyone likes the aesthetic of them, so if you've got no major desire to fill non damn wing in 40k, then it's not going to be quite as good. In terms of fleshing out an army though, it doesn't seem like the worst way to jump into Sisters, you could get this and maybe a couple of copies of the Combat Patrol box set, and you'd have a pretty reasonable threatening army right from the get-go there. And then if you wanted to add a little bit more punch, you could add in a few more heavy-hitting infantry units, things like Retributors, Zephyrim, or more Repentia. Next up, we have the two sets that are basically a Chaos Primarch in a box, plus some troops. Out of the two, the Thousand Sons just missed out a little bit compared with the Death Guard, though they were both rated pretty similarly, and I can not see why, as their box sets are kind of equivalents. The Thousand Sons one is the Court of the Crimson King, in that you get Magnus, 20 Rubik Marines, and 3 Exalted Sorcerers. It does seem like a pretty reasonable way to jump into Thousand Sons if you want to, to be honest, and it does pair very, very well with the Combat Patrol, 
as there's basically no overlap between the two boxes, as I get you some Terminators, the Infernal Master, and some Zangles. The cost of these models separately is on the higher side, around $340, £200, or €260, Euros. and in terms of points that it gets you on the board, it's second best, around about 1,150 points, depending on exactly what kit you give the Rubric Marines. Overall, I'd say there isn't too much to criticise about this box. Rubric Marines are pretty much the iconic Thousand Suns units, and this gets you lots of them, they're very strong in game at the moment, and they're led by a trio of sorcerers, which you definitely want to pick up that set at some stage. It could just be a little bit unhelpful if you already have the enough sorcerers and you don't need any more. I feel like the absence of Zangors from a Thousand Suns discount set is probably something that will spark joy for a lot of Thousand Suns players. I guess the Thousand Suns range isn't exactly enormous, but it's rare to see a box set that doesn't have a whole load of goat bird boys in the same set as the full-blooded Space Marines. It's very good in terms of points on the board as well, Having well over half a 2,000 point army list all just in one box set is pretty decent from Games Workshop. It looks like this would work out to be around about a 5 or better point per dollar ratio, which is very very good from Games Workshop and better than most of their combat patrols. I would say though that obviously Magnus being in the box does kind of dominate it. If you're a Thousand Suns player who already has Magnus and maybe some Sorcerers, it's pretty much not going to be worth it for you. But if you don't have the Primarch, it looks like it could be pretty tempting. I feel like the majority of people from Thousand Suns or Death Guard do wind up picking up the Primark eventually. They are some of Games Workshop's most popular and best-selling models. I think if I were thinking about starting Thousand Suns in the near future, I would likely pick this up, and then maybe bulk it out with a Combat Patrol box set at some stage down the line, and then maybe some more Rubric Marines or Scarabs on top of that. You could have a 2,000 point army at least fairly simply here. Next up is the Death Guard counterpart to the Thousand Suns box set, the Council of the Death Lord. That one's Mortarian, 14 Plague Marines, and 5 Blight Lord Terminators. They were kind of voted very similar to the Thousand Suns, not 100% sure why the Death Guard win out. It might just be that they're a bit more of a popular faction overall, with them being one of the title factions of 8th edition. The kits cost separately just a little bit less than the Thousand Suns ones, though still very good. $330, £196, or €258. Euros. But the points cost that you get in the box is a little bit less, at 950 Though admittedly, the Thousand Suns box set wins on that just by duplicating up on Sorcerers a bit. Again, like the Thousand Suns box set, it seems like a pretty decent way to start Death Guard. Mortarian, again, is one of Games Workshop's best selling models in recent years, a pretty iconic centerpiece for the chapter, and Mass Plague Marines are particularly strong right now. You can tool them up with all their fun plague weapons and just go to town on the enemy. The Blight Lords are fine as well, a solid anvil unit, and again, like the Thousand Suns one, I feel like it would pair okay with the Combat Patrol box set. That one gives you yet more Plague Marines, so you could field two big squads of 10, plus a whole load of Pox Walkers to keep your objectives sorted. Add in a couple of Demon Engines and maybe some Death Shroud, and then you'd have a full Death Guard army ready to go. Moving up to the most popular box sets now, and in second place we have the Imperial Knights Chainbreaker Lance. This one was solidly ahead of the Chaos box sets, and it's just a nice simple box set to help you jump in to Imperial Knights, or potentially even Chaos ones. In the box you can get a Knight Preceptor, which builds any of the Questorius patterns, like Errant's Paladins or Crusaders or things, two Armager Helverins, and two Armager Warglaives. Cost separately, it's $340, £205, pounds, or €265, Euros, so pretty much on the upper end there. And points-wise, it's the third best, just after the Thousand Zons, around about 1,050 points on the board, depending on exactly what upgrades you give the big boy. I can see why this one's very popular, to be honest. There's pretty much no wastage or questionable choices here. Imperial Knights only really have three kits. Armages are great at the moment, and pretty much every competitive list wants to run at least one Questorus as well. It's great to get some of the kits at a discount, when they don't usually get any discount deals whatsoever, and it is a pretty easy way to start the faction if you wanted to. You could just legitimately pick up two of these, you could legitimately just pick up two of these and have an entire 2,000 point army all in one go. Some of the strongest knight lists around use two Questorus and around seven Armagers, so if you wanted to jump into a competitive 40k list without much effort, this could easily be done. I quite like the way that you could also use this for Chaos Knights if desired. Obviously it's not quite as good as getting the fun themed knights like the Desecrator, Abominant or their themed war dogs, but these ones are the models that you use to make things like the war dog executioners and the knight despoiler with the flexible weapons. You just need to give them an appropriate paint scheme and maybe convert them with some spikes and trophy racks if desired. Overall it's kind of hard to say anything too negative about this. Discounted knights are a rarity. These are some of the most core and usable models out of the whole faction. And if you did want to start an Imperial Knight army and this was on offer, it seems like pretty much a no-brainer compared to buying the kit separately. 
I guess maybe the only mild gripe is that it would have been nice to have a Chaos equivalent as well. I guess they already had their Army Bondle set earlier in the year though with their Codex. Finally, and maybe not particularly surprising to everybody that these guys come first, we have the Adeptus Custodes, and their pretty immense and awesome looking Watchers of the Gate formation. Despite some stiff competition from the Knights, this one quite comfortably won the vote, and it looks like this one is probably going to be the most in demand out of any of the Christmas Battle Force sets. I'd argue that this box is pretty much 100% win, you get Trajan Valoris, 3 versus Praetors, 15 Custodian Guard, which within that set you can also build other minor characters like Shield Captains on foot, or a Vexilla or two to give your Custodians some cover moving up, and then you get 3 Terminators in the Alaris Custodians. Costed separately, they're good but not the best, $337, £202, or €265, Euros. and depending on how you equip them, or how many characters you build, typically you might be looking at around about 1400 points out of one box set, I believe it ranges somewhere in the region of 1300 to 1600 depending on what equipment you take. Even if it's worth something like £130 or $210, it'll still represent one of the best deals available from Games Workshop in my opinion. It'll be around about a 7 to 1 points per dollar ratio, which is around double the amount of several of the other factions' combat patrols, and it would just make getting a Custodes army spectacularly easy to have the miniatures to get on the board. I guess most of the value comes from the Custodian Guard box, which I think is one of the best value kits for troops in most of 40k, and this kit has that box discounted in multiples exactly the way that you want it, plus backed up by a couple of their special elites in the Virtus Praetors and the Alarus. Again, really quite a nice mix there, having them present, but not dominating the box and being spammed too much. Games Workshop's plastic line for Custodes isn't enormously big, it's quite cool to see the majority of Custodes kits represented here, and the vast majority of it is really quite competitive in game for the Custodes right now, only really the Alaris Terminators are a bit suboptimal, but it's still cool to have them included as an option if you did want to field some, and of course they might always get better in the future with points adjustments. Overall, I can see why this one is going to be very, very popular. By Games Workshop standards, it looks like an absolutely great deal, and honestly probably the biggest negative that I can think about it is that it makes me think that I could probably pick up a Custodes army for pretty cheap, just get this and the combat patrol box, and you basically have a 2000 point force all ready to go. If you would get something like a 20% discount, that looks like you could get an entire 2000 point 40k army for around about £170 or something like $280. Obviously still a lot of money, but by Games Workshop's terms that's about as good as it ever gets. I certainly wouldn't be particularly surprised if these guys sell out fairly quickly. So overall, putting it together, here's just a few of the overall ratings. The viewer voted popularity contest, headed up by the Custodes, then the Knights, then the Death Guard. The cost of the kits individually, which varies in total by around about $40. Raven Guard actually head up that one, with the Abmech being at the bottom. Though to be honest, the disparities aren't exactly enormous on that one. And as with last year, there might be some of these Christmas box sets that cost a little bit more or a little bit less. So they might not all be exactly the same price to begin with. Finally, for the points in the box, as mentioned, it really is a very big win for Team Custodes but still strong performances for the Thousand Sons, Imperial Knights, Death Guard and Sisters. Overall, things like the Adeptus Custodians and Imperial Knights perform pretty strongly across all three categories, with the Chaos Boxes both being okay across most things too. Overall, in terms of people's preferences, it is pretty much as expected really. I was thinking that the Custodians would win and the Raven Guard would probably be last, but I'll be interested to hear your guys' thoughts. If you'd be tempted to pick up any of these boxes, which ones appeal most to you and why? Look forward to hearing all your thoughts down in the comments as per normal. If you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics as well. I will certainly keep the regular 40k news and discussion coming. I tend to post YouTube videos just about every day. Finally, if you've been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that link down below in the video description if you are interested in helping keep them coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next for the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.